Hey everyone! Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to dive into the fascinating world of traffic signals and how they help control the flow of traffic in our cities. So, buckle up and let's get started. Did you know that the first illuminated traffic signal was installed way back in 1868 in London, England? It had two gas lamps, red and green, and semaphore arms on a pole. Sadly, it exploded shortly after its installation, killing a policeman. Fast forward to 1914, and the first electric traffic signal was installed in Cleveland, Ohio. It had green and red lights along with a warning buzzer. The familiar green, yellow, and red light system we know today was first used in New York City in 1918. And in Los Angeles, traffic lights had green and red lights, a warning gong, and semaphore arms with stop and go written on them. Now, let's talk about the modern traffic signal system. It consists of three main subsystems, the signal lights in their housing, the supporting arms or poles, and the electric controller. The signal lights and housing are called the signal light stack. Typically, a single stack has three lights, green at the bottom for go, yellow in the middle to warn drivers to slow down and prepare to stop, and red at the top for stop. To help those with red-green color blindness, the vertical stacking of lights is standardized with red at the top. Each light has a Fresnel lens, which may have a visor to make it more visible in bright sunlight. The lens features concentric angled ridges that bend the light into a parallel beam. To make the signals more distinguishable, a dark-colored backing plate may be added to block out surrounding lights from buildings and signs. There are one or more signal light stacks for each direction of each roadway, and the electric controller is usually mounted in a weatherproof box at the intersection. Traffic signals can be operated manually, by a simple timer, or through sophisticated electronic controllers that sense the time of day and traffic flow to adjust the sequence of operation. Traffic engineers use these signals to prevent congestion and improve safety for both drivers and pedestrians. Some traffic signals even have electromagnetic sensors buried in the roadway to detect traffic flow at various points, making them even more efficient in managing traffic. And that's it, folks. We hope you enjoyed learning about traffic signals and how they help keep our roads safer and more organized. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more interesting content like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.